Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm so excited. Today, I'm chatting with Natalie, and Natalie is a career counselor. Um, and, you know, Natalie, what I find is that often as mental health counselors, um, people think we can talk about careers, and we do have a little bit of education in that regard, but I know you have expertise in helping people find jobs. So tell us, tell us, what is a career counselor? What is career counseling? So a career counselor is somebody that supports individuals to find work. It's mm -hmm. also a the position includes, you know, we could be like a facilitator where we do workshops and we talk in front of groups and we provide tools to people that are looking for work. Mm -hmm. um, often it involves resume writing, cover letter writing, interview skills is a big one because not everybody's always comfortable in an interview. So I find that, you know, I do have a lot of little tips and tricks that I give to my clients um, to kind of get them through that interview process and getting prepared for that interview. Um, other things that career counselors do is we do career account or career um, cruising exploration, which is where we work with the client. We do different types of assessments to kind of see what might be the right area for our clients to go. So it could be, um, you know, personality assessments or a skills assessment to kind of just find out where you're coming from and where you could possibly go. But our overall goal is to just kind of be that bridge in supporting people from being unemployed or somebody who just wants to change employment and getting to the other side. So helping them make that pathway across by providing tools and, you know, resumes, cover letters, et cetera. So that's what we do. Yeah, I think that interview piece is really good. So tell us about your journey. Like, how did you get into this, you know, this career path? Yeah. So actually, I was living overseas for a very long time. I was a teacher for over 10 years. And we moved around a lot. And every time we moved, um, I had to write a new resume, I had to write a new cover letter. Sometimes I had to, you know, have an interpreter in my interviews. Sometimes I had to interview in my second language. So for me, making all those moves all around and being a teacher, when I came back to Canada, I didn't want to be a teacher in a classroom setting with students anymore, but I knew I still wanted to be a teacher. And so I ended up becoming a career counselor and getting certified from Simon Fraser. Um, and then from there, I just kind of knew that that was where I wanted to be. And it's something I've just been super passionate about because I know how hard it is for, you know, sometimes I have clients that are newcomers and it's really hard for newcomers to kind of, well, what kind of resume do I need? What kind of cover letter do I need? Where do I look for jobs? How do I look for jobs? How do I apply for jobs? What happens in an interview here? Oh my gosh, the interview is virtual. What does that mean? Oh my gosh, it's in person. I don't know if I can do that. So I'm there, you know, right now here in my in my path. Um, after seven years of working at Work BC, um, I've decided to start my own company, Jumpstart Careers, to really kind of just help individual people that need the support. Unfortunately, often sometimes when you're working with the system, it does take a longer time. It can take anywhere from six to eight weeks, you know, for a client to get a resume. So I just wanted to cut all of that out and be there for the clients and support them with resumes, cover letters, interviewing and everything else I've talked about already. Yeah. So after connecting with you, like after someone sees a career counselor, how quickly are they able to meet their goals of finding a job? Like what do you typically see in your work? Yeah. So it depends really on the client and the person. Are you somebody that is a go-getter? Are you somebody that's proactive? Are you putting the time in? Because to be completely transparent, I can help you write the best resume possible that's going to get through any applicant tracking system into the hands of HR. I can do that. Mm -hmm. But what's really important is when you are looking for work that you're proactive and you're not just behind a computer screen searching for jobs online you know you're researching and looking up companies you would like to work for that's a big one you're networking you're getting out there you're letting people know you're looking for work 
You're updating your resume because that's something you need to do for every single position. Every job posting is going to be different. Sometimes it has the same job title, but companies are looking for different things. So it's really important that when we work together, I go through the resume with you and how I got to that point in your resume and why I put those things on your resume so that you get that same takeaway. These are those tools I was talking about. So if you're somebody that's willing to put the time in to update your resume, you're going to put the time into job search properly. And you know, you're going to prepare for your interviews. I've seen clients get jobs within a week, sometimes days. But if you're someone that's more of a procrastinator, generally for an entry level position, you can get a job anywhere from zero to three months. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a mid level position, kind of walking in more mid level, then it's anywhere from zero to six months. Right. And if you're looking for that one job because you're highly skilled and educated and there's one job that you do and it's a CEO or it's a vice president or it's one of those highly skilled professions, that can take anywhere up to one year to get if you're being picky for that right job. Right, right. So they could be like anywhere from like zero to three months, you might get the job next day or it might take. So I think it will depend on several different factors. Yeah, yeah. And it what does. I'm hearing from you is that uh, it's good for the students to come like right after high school, which career path to take for refugees or immigrants who are new yeah. to the system, like BC uh, system for them, yeah. as well as people who are highly skilled, how yeah. to find their ideal job. Yeah. And one of the important things is to with youth. Um, in the school system, they have career paths, they have their little program that they have, but they don't actually discuss where do you want to go and what do you want to do? They're still really young, but there are some people that do want to figure it out. So there are special assessments as well that I do give to youth that are kind of like, you know, wanting to go through that path. I just went through it with my daughter last year as well. You know, we kind of talked about what she wanted to do and you know, she liked accounting and I'm like, okay, but this is what accounting is. And then she's like, oh, well, I don't like that. And I'm like, well, what else do you like about accounting? Yes. And then we ended up going through everything and found that business would be the right choice. But it's identifying things that are of interest to you, the skills and and, cl and classes and courses that you're good at, and then kind of making the choices from that. So even starting as early as grade 10, just to kind of start thinking about it, I think is a great thing for our youth. Oh, absolutely. And there is so much need for this kind of a service where we feel lost in our professional lives and finding that balance between personal relationships and our professional, our career, our education. Yeah. And you said assessment. So what kind of assessments would you typically do with folks? So for the career planning and exploration, there's different types of assessments. I generally will do three of the four that I like to use. Um, one that I really like to use is personality dimensions. This is an assessment and it basically goes by your characteristics and things that you like doing and your personality kind of blended in. And then based on the personality outcome, then we can look at some of the occupations that are in your color, let's say. Another assessment I really like doing is motivated skills. And this is a good assessment because we break down a bunch of different skills and ones that you like and ones that you don't like. Skills that you're good at, skills that you're not good at. Because we can really narrow down the jobs by looking at that. I also use um, transition to work inventory, which is where we identify your interests. And then it kind of coincides with skills as well. I also like to talk about values when exploring work and looking at how your values come into what it is you're looking for for a position, um, not just your position, but what are you looking for in an organization and a company you want to work for? And then I have a couple of, I'm certified for Myers-Briggs as well, that tends to have a higher level of English. So there's certain clients that are really, you know, really want to have that one. And other clients are more like, you know what, I'm going to go with these other ones because I really want to understand what you're asking me about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it seems like it gives you good data to figure out where this client might be, where they need to go. How do we bridge that gap? Yeah, we take the answers from the assessments and then I'll kind of like almost like a Sven diagram and I put the information together and I try to find that sweet spot where there's an overlap of mm -hmm. skills, interests, 
and any experience that you might have or education you might have. And then when we get that spot, that's the spot. And usually there tends to be a few options there, which is what we always hope for. Right. And what happens if you feel that, okay, I'm not seeing much education or much background, but they want to do this job? Like, how do you figure that yep. scenario? So if there is a job that a client wants to do and they don't have the background or the skills, depending on where they are in their career. If you don't have a lot of work experience, then it's something we could look at and investigate, you know, what might be the right career path for you to get there? Does it mean you have to go to school or does it mean you have to try to get in at an entry level position to get your foot in the door? Sometimes if you're somebody that is re-careering through your career and you know you're coming up in your 30s, 40s, 50s, even 60s, and you're deciding, you know what, I want to make a change, you need to talk to somebody. Talk to somebody, bounce ideas off of them, because sometimes I have clients that say, well, I need to go back and I need to get this three year program. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. let's talk about it. Let's not put money into it yet. Let's talk about it. Let's see what you've done for your work already. What is your experience, your skills? Where are you coming from? And then from there, we can look at what would be the best career path for you to get to that job that you want to do. Right. Yeah. Do you feel that there is barrier for, say, moms? They had their kids. They took break from that career. They don't want to go back to that career, but they don't know what they want to do. Like, you know, when there is a gap, like five, 10, 15 years that didn't work, kids were little. So what, what would you do in that case? Yeah. So I've had a lot of clients that have been stay at home parents and, you know, they'll come to me and they'll say, but I'm, but I'm just a mom. I was just a parent. And I'm like, there are so many things that go with that, you know, whether it be, you know, you're part of a pack committee or organizing schedules and making, you know, doing the grocery shopping and budgeting and all of that. Those are all things we can put on your resume. There are ways to work around it. There are special types of resume formats that we can use to kind of narrow down those gaps and fill it in with all of the good things that you have. Um, Another thing too is depending on where they would want to go. Again, let's look at the steps, what you've been doing, where it is you want to go, where you're coming from. You don't want to go back there. We could even talk about what are some of the possibilities that are out there in terms of programs. There are tons of free programs right now that the government puts out regularly. And I know a lot about those programs with seven years in work BC. So it's definitely something that we could talk about, talk through. And then if you are working with somebody that knows what they're talking about, a career counselor, we do have that extra knowledge of, well, there is this program that is free that mm -hmm. you can get into. Yes. Yeah. A lot of times newcomers are not aware of all the support that they can receive from oh, the gosh. government. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you have in with like say companies, organizations, someone is reaching out, like would you help them find a job besides uh, counseling them like resume writing or job preparation interview preparation like can you get them in with the organization so it would depend on the organization I of course have ties to certain companies um I've been working with them for a long time it would depend on the client and what it is they're looking for and what their expectations are as well um and you know it, it's what we call job development and if a client wanted some sort of job development, it would definitely have to be somewhere that was in my realm because I wouldn't want to promise that to somebody. But there are job developers out there. I do have a colleague who started her own business and she is a job developer. So we've kind of collaborated a few times and she has the world at her fingertips. She just knows so many people and she's amazing. I um, mean, so we have collaborated together. Yes. No, that sounds good. Like knowing the ins and outs of the company and job development can be so helpful. Yeah. But if someone is not ready to embark on that, I don't know if I have funds or I'm not ready to talk to someone. I need to figure this out on my own. What tips would you give to someone who's looking for a job mm -hmm. or is struggling professionally? Yeah, I think the best thing for people to do is if you don't have the abilities to kind of just go out there and do it. I mean, I would always say check out, you know, WorkBC's website. Um, they have a lot of great tools on there. Um, go on LinkedIn. 
look at LinkedIn. LinkedIn's got amazing resources on their website as well to kind of help you through the steps. Um, there's lots of online things that you can do. My only concern is I work with a lot of people that bring me resumes that they've just got off the internet, like a template. Um, and a lot of the templates you're going to find on the internet have text boxes um, or graphs or charts or color and pictures. And those are all things you want to avoid on your resume because of the applicant tracking system. It can't read through it. So I would definitely say to clients, Go to WorkBC's website, look on WorkBC's website, see what you can get out there. I also do have a couple of free resources that I'm going to be posting on my website. So people that, you know, really don't want to kind of commit just yet, they can kind of get that process started on their own by resourcing those resources I have on my website. No, that sounds fantastic, having those free resources so that if we are not ready to commit, at least you can start getting information and knowledge like we are yeah. trying to get to the community. Um, yeah. What else should they know Like while connecting with you? like Do you offer free consults or what does the process look like of working with a career counselor? Yeah, so working with me, basically how I start is I always have a complimentary 30-minute session. Mm -hmm. We talk about what your expectations and needs are, um, kind of where you're at and, you know, what it is you want to get out of our time together. Um, and then, yeah, you know, I am I do get paid by the hour, but, you know, there are certain cases where I know that somebody might not be able to pay that. And that is something that I've always worked with my clients to ensure that they're still getting that best service for me. Um and at a lower rate, because I do know that there are some people out there that can't pay full price. And and I, I don't do my job for the money. I do my job because I'm really passionate about helping people. Um, there are a lot of things that we can do. And there are a lot of ways to work around it. And I'm just kind of happy to help. Yes. Okay. No, that sounds wonderful. So people pay out of pocket or would you take, um, are there certain government programs or something that you get funding to support these people? Yeah. So no, for me, when it's just me uh, and I work with a client, it's from them out of pocket and they would pay me. Um, but like I said, I, I have done work where I have given heavy, heavy discounts to clients that are kind of in a tough spot. You know, single parents, I always give, you know, really great discounts for single parents. Youth, they don't have a lot of money, you know, so I don't mind doing that. Um, but I do think that as well, there are other options out there with, you know, these government programs that are out there. I'm happy to put them in contact with the right person. I wouldn't take any payment for that at all. But if there is something that I think would be right for the person that's better than working with me, 100%, I'm going to put them on the right path. And even if they're like, oh, you know, I just want to know more about this program that, you know, the BC government has done. I'm like, oh, well, let me give you that information. And this is the person you want to call, particularly working in trades. You know, somebody wants to get into trades. Yeah, I could write you a resume, but if you're just getting started, you really want to get in touch with the Trades Association. They're going to be your best bet, and they can set you up from the beginning and help you all the way to your four years and getting becoming a journeyman and apprentice. Yes, no, that sounds fantastic. Um, and do you support folks, for example, if they were in trades or some kind of uh, job where they got injured and cannot go back to their job? Like, would you do something that? Uh, like vocational shift in terms of you can't be a painter anymore, you can't climb because of back injury. Would yeah. You yeah, I've done a lot of work with tradespeople. There's, you know, sheet metal workers, painters, drywallers are some of my most common clients that I've had because of the shoulder injuries. Yeah. They just can't do it anymore. Plumbers are another one because of being on their knees for a long time. Um, so I definitely have worked with a lot of clients that are coming in that transition. And, you know, some clients, if you're hurt at work, my advice is always to go to WorkSafe, file with WorkSafe and go through them. But if you're somebody that's just getting to that point in your career where it hurts your mm -hmm. body physically to go to work, it's time for a change. And I'm happy to work with clients through that. Yes. Okay. So how can they reach you? How can they get in touch with you? Yeah. So you can reach me um, by email and that is natalie at jumpstart-careers.com okay. or you can go to my website, which is www.jumpstart-careers.com. 
Lovely. And I'm going to add all this information in the notes section here so people can look that up and reach to you if they have any questions or if they need support or if they know someone who needs support. So yeah. thank you so much. I love that you were able to carve this time and have this conversation with us. So yeah, thank One you. Thing so I would just love to add um, is that when it comes to clients being work ready, um, this is just one thing when I do have that 30 minute complimentary session, I really want to make sure that when I'm working with a client or clients, if, if you're out there and you're looking for work, you want to make sure that you're work ready. And that 30 minute session is a really great time for us to talk about. Are you ready for work? Are you ready to make this commitment? Or do you still need a little bit more time? And then in that session, you know, I'll, I'll draw a path out for the clients come back to me in three months. Once you've kind of gone through these other things, which is where it might be a good collaboration between what it is you do and what it is I do absolutely love that love that piece yeah. thank you so yeah. much I love it that you're you so would... welcome yes okay perfect we will see you around thank you for your valuable time. thanks for having me bye